Thank you for joining me for Wednesday Wisdom. This is a weekly devotion where we follow the F260 Bible reading plan. This week we're in the Gospel of Mark chapter 9. We're going to start in verse 33, but first I want to kind of set the scene for you here. There's lots of important things that have been happening. The disciples have been with Jesus for about three years at this point in Mark's gospel. Um, We see uh, early on in the chapter that uh, Jesus takes three of his disciples, specifically Peter, James, and John, up into a mountain, and he's transfigured. So they see him in all of his glory, and Elijah and Moses are there. And so really this glorious scene of really seeing the divinity of Christ. And then Jesus heals a boy with an unclean spirit, and then Jesus teaches again and foretells his death and resurrection. So lots of important things are happening. But then we see what's Kind of a low point for the disciples. We see uh, their uh, humanity and their flesh very well. Uh, Look with me in verse 33. And they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve, and he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and a servant of all. And he took a child and put him in the midst of them, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such a child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but him, he, but but him who sent me, but him who sent me. So the disciples, obviously, they're, uh, they're, they're having an argument on the way. Well, I'm the greatest. No, I'm the greatest. Uh, and, you know, possibly arguing about, you know, who is going to have the best seat in uh, the kingdom once Jesus takes over, right? We, even at this point, they had a very earthly understanding of the kingdom of God. And uh, many of you know we just finished up a, a series on the kingdom of God, a sermon series as we're walking through Luke um, over uh, the past few months. Months. And one thing that we see there is that the kingdom of God is this true reality, but it is a spiritual kingdom and it's a coming kingdom. But the way that the disciples understood it, even to this point, this is a very physical kingdom. They thought King Jesus came, he's going to rule, and we're going to have this great place in the kingdom. Um, what exactly were they arguing about? Who knows? You know, who, who can cast out the most demons? Who's done the most? Who's the most faithful? Who really knows? But they're acting very childish, right? And so Jesus says... Hey, what were you talking about? And, you know, they they didn't want to say anything. They knew that he already knew exactly what they had been discussing. And so he sits down in a very traditional rabbinic rabbinic sense, like a rabbi um, that he was, and begins uh, to teach them. So this is a very serious thing. And what he tells them, um, really these two statements, is uh, I think a a difficult one for us to grasp. Um, We've heard it many times. We've probably considered it. um, But it's it's, it's got a lot of meaning for us. He says, if anyone would be first, he must be last of all and a servant of all. So in the kingdom of God, to be last and to be a servant is actually to be first. So to be first means to be last. It's like, well, how exactly does this work? Well, I think we all have possibly had times where we've thought about uh, or seen the uh, the preacher, the Christian who is all uh, about the pomp and circumstance, right? They, they 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 practically have intro music when they come up to preach, and this is not at all what Jesus is is talking about. It's not about the grandeur or the the splendor or, or the Christian who you know when they're doing things, they're doing it for people. It's like, well, I'm going to serve this person, but I'm going to serve someone who can actually help me. No, actually, we should be a servant to all. And what the Christian life looks like is very much serving the least of these. Jesus said, if you do this unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. And so really what the Christian life looks like and what it means often following Jesus results in us serving uh, not someone who's going to help advance us and not something that's going to, you know, when we think about it, well, I'm going to help this person if it's going to help me, counting the cost in that way. No, I want to serve, be a servant to all and not put myself over anyone. It's not who's greatest. It's now how can I be a servant in response to what Christ has done. We know that the Son of God came not to be served, but to serve. Right? He, he left glory. He condescended, came down to our level to serve us and to be a sacrifice for sin. And so we should take his example and be a servant. Not saying, what can I get out of this? But how can I serve? How can I advance 
the kingdom. And then he gives an illustration, a physical illustration. He says he takes a child and he put him in the midst of them. And taking this child in his arms, he said to them, whoever receives one such a child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. And I don't think he's specifically only talking about children. Um, he, he's showing the lowest of the low here. The children were not very thought, highly thought of in this society, not like they are in ours. Of course, children were blessings even then, but they had much, such a, a lower status. And really in the, the original language here, this, this word child can mean servant as well. And so he's taking the lowest of the low and he's receiving them. And he says, if you receive someone who can't advance, help advance you, someone who you really are just being a blessing to, if you're, if you are receiving them and serving them, you're actually serving me. And if you actually are serving Jesus, you are serving the Father because the Father and Jesus are one, right? Jesus, the eternal Son of God, um, e eternally one in purpose and, and, the, and the very, very God of very God. And so what I think this means for us is that we should be looking for opportunities to serve. It doesn't matter who it is, it doesn't matter what their status is, but no, we should serve even the least. Um, and, and, and that's what it looks like to be a kingdom disciple. Not what I can get out of this, not what's even going to make me feel good, right? But how can I be a servant? So whether that's in ministry, whether that's in your job, whether that's in your family, in your marriage, what you think about this week? What are ways in which I can serve? And what are ways in which I can live my life, not based off what somebody else can give me, but how I can serve them and then also share the gospel with them? Well, thank you for joining me for Wednesday Wisdom. I will see you next week as we continue our study through the gospels. You have a blessed week.